I know everybody is missing the Camp Nou right now, and the next time that fans fill the football cathedral, the stadium may have a new name. But that won't stop kool from calling it the Camp Nou. FC Barcelona's home stadium is the largest in Europe, but that wasn't always the case. Today, we're talking about all the places that FC Barcelona have called home. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube Exclusive. Before we reveal Barca's first stadium, it would be a big help if you could give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell down there for some notifications. Thanks a bunch, and let's get started. For the first 10 years of Barca's existence, they played on a few different fields around the city, including one located in La Bona Nova and one on Carrer Montaner. In 1908, the club was in trouble, both on the field and off it, and Juan Gamper became president for the first time to help the club avoid bankruptcy. Gamper knew they needed a permanent home to survive and bring in some stable income. So on March 14, 1909, the Camp de la Industria became the first official home of FC Barcelona. It could reportedly hold 6,000 people, though it wasn't known to fill up. The first goal scored at the Camp de la Industria was scored by Roma Forns, a local player who played for the club from 1903 to 1913 and later served as manager in the late 20s for Josep Cemetier, Franz Platko, and Sadi Barba. The Camp de la Industria saw its first trophy in just the second match, when Barca won the Catalan Championship. Seven more Catalan Championships followed at the stadium until it was closed in 1922 to make way for the Camp de las Cortes. It was at the Camp de la Industria where Barcelona's first full-time manager, Jack Greenwell, made a name for himself as both a player, then a manager. Francisco Bru, Pepe Rodriguez, and of course Paulinho Alcantara were some of the other big stars during the stadium's run. And Roman Taralba, aka the old one, got the first testimonial match in Barca's history at the Camp de la Industria in 1917. Gamper worked hard to recruit more members of the club, and by 1922, the now more than 20,000 members needed a new stadium, and thus the Camp de las Cortes was built and became the new home of FC Barcelona. The original capacity of Las Cortes was 20,000 spectators, but by the time the stadium was replaced by the Camp Nou in 1957, capacity was up to 60,000 people. The first match ever played at the ground was FC Barcelona versus St. Mirren from Scotland. The defining incident at the Camp de las Cortes occurred in June of 1925, when the fans booed the Spanish national anthem and then applauded God Save the Queen as it was performed by the British Royal Marine Band. Gamper was forced to step down, accused of promoting Catalan nationalism, and the stadium was closed for six months. This was Gamper's last action as president, as he was forced out with pressure from the dictatorship and was no longer allowed to be connected to the club. He committed suicide five years later. Las Cortes saw some of Barca's darkest days, the Spanish Civil War, and a lack of trophies, but there were some good times in the stadium too. In 1927, Alcantara got his testimonial match there against the Spanish national team. 11 Catalan championships, and most importantly, the first La Liga title won by Barcelona in 1929. In 1945, a group including Josep Escola, Cesar Rodriguez, Juan Velasco, and Jose Bravo won the team's second La Liga, and winning the title again in 1948 and 1949, adding a Copa Latina in 1949. 1952, though, was the golden year for Las Cortes. The club was soaring, winning all five possible trophies that year. The La Liga, Copa del Generalismo, Copa Latina, Copa Iva Duarte, and the Copa Martini Rossi. This success came at just the right moment too, because by the time Barcelona signed Lazo Kubala in 1950, those at the club already recognized that the now 60,000 capacity Las Cortes could no longer handle the fans' desire to see the team in action. The Camp de Las Cortes also served as the home to España Industrial, a Catalan side that served as the reserve team for FC Barcelona, spending the majority of its time in the second and third division, until the team won promotion to the Liga for just one season in 1956-57 and was renamed CD Candal. In 1970, CD Candal merged with Athletic Catalunya to become Barça Athletic, or Barça B. Work began on the Camp Nou in 1955. Made largely of concrete and iron, the stadium put the club in some debt with a price tag of 288 million pesetas. Designed by Frances Michans Miro and Josep Soteras Mori, and with the help of Lorenzo Garcia Barbon, the stadium was opened on September 24, 1957, with a capacity of 93,053 spectators. That number went up to 120,000 spectators for the FIFA World Cup in 1982, where the Camp Nou hosted the semi-final, and currently sits at 99,354. The stadium was originally called the Estadi del FC Barcelona, but if the old ground was Las Cortes, the Camp Nou was indeed the new ground. 
In the 2000-2001 season, voted by the Socios, the Camp Nou became the official name of the stadium and not just a nickname anymore. In 2014, the proposal to build a new stadium was rejected, with the board of directors instead opting to remodel the current Camp Nou. The plans are to add a few thousand seats, bringing the capacity to 105,000 spectators. Current events will affect the timeline of expansion, as construction was set to begin this summer and to be completed by 2024. The Camp Nou has seen some great moments. Unbelievable goals by Evaristo, Juan Antonio Pisi, Johan Cruyff, Rivaldo, and quite a few by Lionel Messi. And so many tremendous goodbyes, this one from Andres Iniesta being the latest. Only three stadiums, but over 100 years of history. Not every great memory occurred at Barcelona's home pitch, but every trophy that the team wins gets presented to the fans at the place where they belong. Like all of you, I can't wait to get back to the Camp Nou either. But until then, we're going to keep making content just like this here on the channel. So it would be a big help if you could give us a like and subscribe and listen to our weekly podcast wherever you get your podcasts. But most importantly, as always, until next time, stay safe and Forza Barca.